us a, a text and follow us on Facebook. And uh, we're excited to uh, spend this time with you during the next hour. Well, Dr. Warren, again, it is another action-packed weekend uh, week that we are going through. I don't know if, if you know, I always have to say as a preacher, you know, we, we take up different topics and we have little themes. And uh, uh, if I would say um, the theme or, or my text for this morning would probably be the young and the restless and the dumb and the foolish. <laughs> and boy, would that be timely. Be- uh, as you and I were just discussing, we've exceeded 150,000 deaths in the U.S., over 4 million people infected with the numbers growing, death toll going up in a number of uh, cities and counties, uh, young people now dying like they never were before, uh, becoming infected in San Diego County. Uh, we have been very uh, blessed in a sense that at least the numbers for African Americans have not been there in terms of deaths, uh, though we are six times more likely to be infected than other people because of a number of underlying health conditions. And so a lot of this, again, is the virus might be there, but we have the ability to control how we react to the virus. And we still see people walking around with no face, face mask, uh, no covering, uh, no real concern. And uh, not only are they a danger to themselves, but also putting others at risk. You know, the the reason why um, I wanted to make sure that we start off by talking about uh, COVID, I think that um, there are certain things that we, we need to talk about on a consistent basis um, in what we call the new normal. And um, we have not effectively uh, uh, conquered or got past this virus. This virus is, is mutating. It is alive and well. Uh, just, just recently, one of the Congress people that were not advocating for masks and things of that nature, uh, just just got with, uh, infected with the COVID, and he was actually getting ready to get on Air Force One. Yesterday, and uh, he did make that pre-clearance test, uh, and he was one of the people uh, that was screaming the loudest against it. He was just with Barr the day before doing his uh, hearing on Capitol Hill, and I think they had to go test Barr again today to see if he got it. And it just proves the airborne nature of this virus that uh, – when people speak uh, and you're breathing out, if you have it, uh, you put it in the air. And if you don't have a mask, uh, then it has a, uh, an ability to get to you. So it shows that there's no respect of persons. Doesn't care whether you're black, white, Democrat, Republican, young or old. Uh, people are dying uh, from this virus. Uh, a lot of good people and uh, elders are at greater risk than anyone uh, because of a number of conditions. I even saw there was a young lady... Uh, uh, in the South, I forget which state, yesterday, she was a beautiful little young black girl, nine years old, uh, got the virus and was gone within uh, hours uh, in front in terms of it being, like you said, it's mutating. You don't mm-hmm. know it's hitting people differently, and uh, not everybody lives to go on a ventilator. And then they are finding other conditions even after people are recovering. They don't return back to the full strength they were before. You know, and, and one of the sad things about it is is that as we begin to talk about the new normal and we're we're looking at uh, this virus and is this seems to be out of control, I wonder if we would just take uh, a step back and say, how are the other countries that are being very successful? What are they doing that we're that what are they doing differently than we are <laughs> that um, uh, they're not uh, at this pandemic rate and you know. Um, our current president said that we were doing so well, but it, it, in actuality, uh, we're climbing up the ladder to lead in and starting to have the most deaths and the most people that are infected. Um, and yet we keep on talking about uh, we got to get NBA back. We got to get baseball back. Baseball teams, um, I think it was the, the Royals, uh, had yeah. to stop play. Yep. And people came down, the numbers of uh, players infected. The Marlins down there, they had about 14. 15- 14, 15 people infected. The big difference, uh, Dr. Thompson, is that uh, America's slogan is what gets us in trouble. Land of the free, home of the brave. Uh, now we can add home of the ignorant, the rebellious, um, the privileged, uh, the idea that you cannot tell me what to do. I don't have to wear a mask if I don't want to. Um, 
uh, all kinds of excuses, the people who are so used to not having rules apply to them. And that very arrogance is killing uh, so many. And it might also be a reason why so few of us are among them in many instances, unless uh, we are in those occupations that are at risk where people just uh, just have to be exposed on a regular basis. And so this is uh, a very serious issue. We are now restricted from traveling to most countries um, within this country. Uh, there are restrictions in terms of where people go. If you go to New York, uh, Governor Cuomo has made it clear you got to be quarantined for 14 days uh, once you land there, and they are keeping up with your quarantine and where you're placed and watching you and the whole bit. So uh, it's 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 quite serious. One of the things that um, the big conversation, um, uh, one of one of one of our our guests said, "Why do they call it the new normal? There's nothing normal about that." And that and and. <clears throat> Honestly, they call it the new normal because uh, we're going to have to find some normality out of this situation in this time. And um, uh, it's very uncomfortable because you really uh, don't know what's going to happen next. The one thing that we do know is that when people gather in numbers, uh, we can ha- it becomes very dangerous and um, uh, without social distancing, without wearing masks. And it greatly concerns me, again, that we're wasting time, energy, and money at this point um, having, to me, the dialogue about sending our kids back to school. Well, it is a waste, and it is a a danger both to the kids, to the teachers, to the homes that the kids come from. All of this is very real, and uh, normal gets to be that which recurs on a regular basis and becomes a, a, a standard, and it's a normal in terms of being home. It's a new normal in terms of businesses being closed, people being unemployed, and uh, here we have uh, a stimulus pe- uh, package being discussed that should have been passed by now to provide some continuity for the American people in terms of this crisis. But our problem as a nation is that we have now put the dollar ahead of human lives, mm-hmm. and now a part of the new normal is becoming a desensitivity to death, Mm -hmm. that so many people are dying around Uh folks that you're no longer, we just hear a number every day. I heard something interesting yesterday that said if we want to put it in perspective, the number of people who have died have uh, exceeded the populations of uh, Patterson, New Jersey, Pasadena, California, and a couple other cities. And when you just look at all those people together and you still have death left over, then that's an idea. And you see, you can't see the virus. You can't put your hands on it. And so everything looks okay like it used to be, but it's not the same scenario. And here in San Diego, we have uh, a number of issues. Here in California, we have issues. Uh, there's a national issue of concern in terms of rents. Uh, people are on the verge of being evicted because they aren't working. They don't have money. And yet this Republican Party, I did an editorial this week called America Under Attack. Uh, And I invite people to uh, follow it online and to hear it. And what I do in essence is remind us that, you know, in Washington, D.C., the National Archives, which holds three important documents for us, the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, and the Bill of Rights. And uh, many years ago, I had an office that was right across the street from uh, that building just about, and I could look out the window and read the inscription that was on the top of the building on the um, north side. And the inscription said that what is past is prologue. And uh, there was a a historian uh, some years ago by the name of uh, Arnold Toynbee who made an observation in his studies that some 28 civilizations uh, had collapsed uh, from within. And he made this observation. He says, They were not murdered. They committed suicide. Mm -hmm. And one of those uh, uh, places highlighted was Rome, which in A.D. 177, uh, as you know, fell. And so here we are following a pattern uh, in terms of collapse from within, uh, in terms of having a president who violates the Constitution and his oath of office. And we have uh, cohorts like Mitch McConnell, Republican Party and members, Bill Barr, who uh, tramples the Constitution as attorney general, and all of these people are committing crimes in terms of greed. To show you the greed, Dr. Thompson, in this bill that they're now trying to get passed, that Republicans want to reduce the 
uh, unemployment insurance from six hundred to two hundred dollars a week, saying people are making too much money at a time that they need it most. And yet, in the midst of that, they have stuck a provision in this bill to put two plus billion dollars in there for a new FBI building to be built across the street from the Trump Hotel on Pennsylvania Avenue in Washington, Mm D.C., because Trump wants to move, he wants to do a new building because the FBI wants to move. Now, the building they're in, I was there when they built the building. It's not that old. It's a big structure. It's It's separate from the Justice Department. It's a huge facility. But the FBI wants to move out into the suburbs, and Trump is afraid that if that happens, uh, that someone will buy that land and build a hotel across the street from his hotel. So he would rather see that $2 billion, which would go toward education, which would go toward unemployment, which would go toward personal protective of gear, which could buy some ventilators and could buy all these things to help these 50 states and all that's taking place. He'd rather see that money go to uh, being set aside for a building uh, rather than taking care of human lives. And this is indicative of what we're struggling with. You know, and the the concern I have is that they keep saying that people don't want to go back to work. And, and the thing that I'm asking is, is there work for them to go back to? And um, I know that I have um, uh, my family member, uh, my spouse, she actually does driving school. Well, that is... There's no way to socially distance yourself when you're trying to teach young people how to drive. And the sad thing about it is, is that, you know, the the clients are not always truthful about what they've been exposed to. Right. And so you're in a confined space for two hours at a time. Uh, it is uh, it is looking for uh, uh, you to be infected because, again, unless you have plexiglass in between you and everything (laughs) else, but then you are not going to be able to grab that wheel. If that child goes left, it's all bad. So um, having somebody saying they don't want to go back to work, but is there work for them to go back to safely? Well, you know, you're so right. In many instances, there is no work for them to go back to. I mean, the people who are working in the restaurants and the coffee shops and the little carryouts and uh, the department stores where they used to sell clothing and nobody's buying and the stores are closing um, and some places are, are open, but no, it's not, the, the work is not there. And the number of jobs are going to go down even more so because there's a realization that even though we're in trials for a vaccine, it's going to take uh, probably at least uh, 90 days, uh, two months to uh, 90 days of uh, shedding down again mm-hmm. to just get a handle on this virus without controlling it, and we aren't even talking about the the, uh, tracers and the investigations and all the other pieces that go with it. Again, we're running out of equipment. They're running out of testing equipment. Um, uh, Workers wearing trash bags and uh, ski goggles because it's not there, and we had ample time to do a national approach to this thing in terms of putting resources there. So, And and that's the one thing that, really concerns me at this point is that I think that California and the representatives here have done an amazing job, but we are on the list as an uptick uh, that many more people are being infected with this virus. And um, really we have to start making some decisions. It seemed like through the protests, uh, through the holidays, people decided that they didn't care anymore and that we're just going to do what we're going to do. We get it. We get it. If we don't, we don't. Well, that's because they, they're doing what they're used to doing, Dr. Thompson. They're used to ignoring the rules that don't apply to them. It applies to the poor and the masses and not to uh, those who consider themselves privileged and well-off. And so they don't, they don't care. Even their uh, <clears throat> being at home is different than other people being at home. Mm-hmm. They got room in their three or four or 6,000 square foot uh, homes or uh, townhouses and and space that other people don't have when families are living together. You know, I take National City as an example. Um, Before this pandemic, we were experiencing a tremendous increase in rents in San Diego County, Mm -hmm. and it was just out of control. It was like, we're going to go for all that we can get. Um, And in National City in particular, there were families coming together, two and three families sharing a one-bedroom apartment, uh, most of these were uh, our Latino brothers and sisters, 
And they did it so they could not be homeless, number one, but more importantly, so that they could stay near the school that their children were attending. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because one of the worst things we can have is children who are homeless and that whole sense of not belonging, in addition to the psychological trauma that many of them are experiencing uh, during this pandemic. And the money that's been set aside for uh, schools is not a drop in the bucket when you consider, and you and I keep discussing, that they have to sanitize and clean the schools. But Dr. Fauci made an interesting observation today. He said that uh, this is almost going to have to be looked at in terms of the school issue on a regional basis, because Mm -hmm. in some places, very few cases, lots of space under control, other places, more urban, congested, uh, learning is going to have to continue to be online. Some places they can go uh, so many, a half a day, but the school issue is connected to the parents' ability to maintain employment, and many of them in these high-risk occupations where they got to choose between do they uh, take care of their child or do they try to work. And in the midst of this, uh, we're throwing uh, uh, crumbs at the whole idea of rental assistance. Um, uh, I think we're doing three or $4,000 people can make applications. Uh, I predict as we go forward with this that um, the protection being afforded to tenants is now being uh, buckled against uh, at least by one member of the city council, the president pro tem, Barbara Bree, who is saying that uh, all you're doing is increasing the debt for the tenants and um, that they're still going to be facing with the the eviction down the road, so why let it get worse? And so all of this gets to be a a matter of dollars um, uh, more than anything else. If I could switch gears uh, and maybe we can, I can do this as we come back, Dr. Thompson. I want to talk about the day there was a press conference, uh, in Southeastern San Diego that was held at the, uh, in front of the Gentry barbershop with the mayor and members of the, the, uh, three, uh, ethnic chambers, uh, talking about, uh, some $700,000 that the, uh, city of San Diego is supposed to make available to small businesses. Well, we'll do that right when we come back from the desk of the editor with Dr. John Warren. We'll be right back at you. For savory soul food and southern hospitality. number of satisfied customers who have discovered Jay's Southern Cafe, the hidden jewel in Hacumba, California. Jay's Southern Cafe is widely known for dishing up soul food style cuisine that will make your mouth salivate. Everything from traditional breakfast favorites like omelets, waffles, hotcakes, eggs, and bacon, to lunch favorites like soups and salads, pulled pork, fish, chicken, and hot link sandwiches, including burgers and fries. But real soul food lovers drive from near... Well, we're right back here from the desk of the editor. We got some little technical difficulties, but we're going to get it right back in. So, Dr. Dr. Warren, let's go back into what you were talking about. Well, you know, it, it, it gets to be something. Um, we have small businesses. Uh, many uh, black businesses are always hurting more than other small businesses because we never had the capital when we started. We didn't have all the infrastructure. We don't have the accounts set aside to finance what we're doing. Uh, Yes, those who have been able to move outside are still doing uh, business. Uh, We've got uh, carryouts that uh, we're doing things like Bankhead, Mississippi, and um, we still have places like Bowlegged doing business and uh, streetcar merchants and all of these places. The business is picking up, and a lot of the uh, restaurants are moving to a Tuesday to Thursday uh, schedule from 12 to 6. Um, and are having difficulty to close at six because people are, are coming out. They want to buy something since they don't want to be cooking and they've already been at home all day. So we, uh, we don't know, you know, they say businesses have been given resources, but, uh, we don't even know how many, uh, black businesses we have in San Diego County. Mm -hmm. Um, and some are home base and, uh, there, of course, I understand there've been some people who, uh, tried to get, uh, grants who, who did have, uh, Money's above the idea of, of being helped. And so um, while we are just beginning to look at businesses and few that there are, I still want to keep putting in a plug for the people who are feeding folks every day, mm-hmm. every day. The, uh, my brother's keeper with uh, Minister Muhammad over there now, they have become a, uh, a super facility. They have 
uh, refrigerated containers and they're getting in milk and eggs and the things that could perish and uh, truckloads of stuff are coming in every day and they're feeding uh, people uh, Tuesdays at the Jacob Center, six or 700 people at a time. And uh, not only my brother's keeper, but Paving Futures and Hip Hop 5K and uh, all of these young people are coming together every day, putting in their time, preparing these bags to be handed to people. And we're putting voice and viewpoint in them to give them updated information on COVID-19. These people are not being paid. And um, I don't see the grants going to them that should be uh, as they are buying with what they have and making food available, sharing among their uh, various points or where some people uh, uh, where there are three entities that are feeding people uh, hot meals Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And uh, so this is important. And uh, some of these dollars ought to be directed in the area of helping uh, not only the ones in terms of what's being supplied, but just the people who are putting in the time. So the funds, so you have, they had the uh, press conference. Um, how are the funds going to be distributed? Because $700,000 is a drop in the bucket based on what we would really need in this county. It is a drop in the bucket because the Mid-City Chamber had asked for a million dollars. I understand from their president that they have uh, received about 550000 uh, dollars so much going toward that mark, and I think they have an August, uh, early August deadline to make the million, and uh, they're uh, already beginning to make distribution and take applications. But you know, with all of this concern about small business, uh, the city of San Diego, and talking about their concern, uh, I haven't seen them reach out to our community newspapers. Uh, not one notice or piece of information have they shared. And it's important because we're online as well as uh, being in print. Um, and so I don't know how we reach a community when all we talk about is the standard entities of uh, the, the Tribune or Voice of San Diego, like those people are all over our communities. And then we have uh, some uh, other electronic uh, entities trying to rush and create advisory groups so they can find out who we are and where we are. And it's not out of a concern, but it's out how do we uh, jump on this and and uh, make sure that we d- do enough dollars to get some recognition that we care. Well, you know, um, you know, in the in the era of Black Lives Matter, uh, 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 all people matters. Um, uh, I saw somebody else says that all artists matters. You know, everybody is using the, the, the theme. You know, there's also the thing about black media matters and um, and the different ethnic media uh, entities that have been out there servicing the communities for years. The question comes in is that do we truly, truly use our advertisement dollars the right way to be able to impact all? Now, here's the thing, and I'm only just going to be, I'm going to call it the way it is, Dr. Warren. Uh in Florida, there was a man who who got over four million dollars from the PPP funds, <laughs> and he partied with them four million dollars. Bought him a Maserati, <laughs> yeah, I mean a a, 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 a what's a, a Ferrari, and everything. And he finally they caught up with him and arrested him for fraud and everything else. My question is. When you do the work and you've done the work for so many years, why is it that people so quickly try to find someone else to uh, involve so they can write it off and they don't actually have the, the infrastructure or even the, the reach to do what they need to do? Well, see, you really put your hands on a very important issue uh, because I see people uh, lying about who they are, what they have, and what they need. Um, the PPP uh, money, the personal uh, protection uh, dollars that's supposed to help with payroll and all these business things. Mm -hmm. These people are going to have to give an account of of the money that they get. They're going to have to come clean about uh, who they are and their business because they're going to have to pay taxes Mm -hmm. or they're going to have to file taxes. And it's a felony to lie on your uh, income tax return. It's also a felony to lie on a bank statement And so all of the things that uh, make it easy for people who there are just some people in this country in the world, but in this country in particular, 
who are used to taking advantage of every crisis. Mm -hmm. It's just like right after we have a tornado or a hurricane or a flood, you have a rush of fake uh, contractors that descend on communities uh, to take people's money and knowing they're not, they can't and won't do the work. Well, since you said that, did you not know, and I, I just found this out, you know, and, and I call it the little secret tidbits that they don't tell us, and we have to really dig deep. Do you not know that from the Small Business Administration, when we have a hurricane or we have a major disaster, right, you can take out, you get a, a, a low-interest loans to right. help you recover. Right. Did you know that they also now have included COVID as a disaster, and you can actually get loans, uh, low-interest loans, for uh, the COVID disaster. Yeah. Um, and I didn't know about that. You know. Yeah, you can. You can, but see, there are a lot of tricks to it because mm -hmm. on the one hand, money is made available, but the other hand, the red tape that goes with the money mm -hmm. because they found, remember, over $500 million that hadn't been distributed that should have gone out, and it was being held up for all kinds of reasons because mm -hmm. what people can do, like in this Trump administration, this Republican uh, era that wants to make sure that protection goes to business. You know, one of the things they're fighting in this new bill is they want it to be uh, so that uh, employees who go back to work uh, because they either have to go to work or lose their benefits cannot sue their employers. Okay, so that kind of protection. So, yeah, yeah. they got all kinds of uh, advantages set up there, and most people can't read all the small print, and, and we're not in this new normal. We're not going through the... Uh, uh, a rule making testing process of mm -hmm. reading and and making comments and again it's a, it's set up for people to fail and to fall through the safety net well let me ask you this question okay uh, I work in the educational system so if I can't sue my employers but they're requiring me to come back and work with kids can the parents sue the educator if they give their kids COVID well obviously we don't have any test case to make this uh, to know right now, but we know that parents do have a right uh, to sue. And we know that uh, here in San Diego County, for instance, through Black Men and Women United, working with the district attorney's office, we had them establish a special task force that allows the fouling of complaints against school officials who misuse their offices and mistreat uh, parents uh, in the process of what they should be doing. So all of this new normal, there's gonna be massive litigation Right now, most of the, the legal activity in this country for law firms is handling bankruptcies mm -hmm. because people are fouling to reorganize or to dissolve to keep from, uh, you know, carrying this debt. And so it's a big issue. But, um, no, uh, it, the rules are there. The changes are there. Uh, but most of the time is places where the disaster impact is highest. For instance, we have a real issue uh, in Texas right now because in addition to a rise in the case numbers, we are in hurricane season. Mm -hmm. And hurricane season and tornado season in the Midwest, like Oklahoma and places, often drive people to shelters. The shelters drive people to being in close proximity to each other. Mm -hmm. So now how do you shelter or have social distancing in a sheltering environment where people are there trying to survive and the very act of what they're into is putting them in greater risk because of the pandemic? Yeah, so this this is a real issue that we're going to have to take on head on, and we can't just believe that just because a antivirus uh, antivirus will come into play that everybody is going to work on and that it's going to be effective. We pray that it's effective so that we can get back. We pray that it will you know be like the measles and 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 be able to take it and we'll be good again. But that's again our prayer. Let's go to a commercial break right now, and then when we come back, um, I want to just talk about. Um, the troops leaving Germany, um, as well as uh, Biden uh, kind of said he's going to make the announcement next week on who's yes. going to be his running mate. So yes. very interesting. Let's talk about it right here on GODRadio1.com from the desk of the editor with Dr. John Warren. How far are you willing to drive for savory soul food and southern hospitality? Join the countless number of satisfied customers who have discovered Jay's Southern Cafe, the hidden jewel in Hacumba, California. Jay's Southern Cafe is widely known for dishing up soul food style cuisine that will make your mouth salivate. 
Everything from traditional breakfast favorites like omelets, waffles, hotcakes, eggs, and bacon, to lunch favorites like soups and salads, pulled pork, fish, chicken, and hot link sandwiches, including burgers and fries. But real soul food lovers drive from near and far to experience Chef Jay's succulent signature barbecue and scrumptious golden fried fish. Not to mention all the mouth-watering sides like cheesy mac and cheese, barbecue beans, collard greens, potato salad, coleslaw, cornbread, and mo. You've got to come and experience Jay's Southern Cafe, located at 44461 Old Highway 80 in Hacumba, California. For a full list of menu items, visit jayssoutherncafe.com or call 619-766-0053. Come dine at Jay's Southern Cafe, where everyone and everything we serve is special. Follow us on Facebook at Jay's Southern Cafe, breakfast, lunch, and barbecue, or call 619-766-0053. Now you make sure you come and see us, you hear? The San Diego Voice and Viewpoint newspaper is San Diego's oldest and largest African-American publication. We bring you news for and about our community. Your stories matter to us. Thank you for allowing us to serve you for nearly six decades. Your support enables us to continue to forge ahead, informing you with news tailored to your needs. In addition to subscribing to our weekly publication, consider using Voice and Viewpoint to promote your business and events. Call us at 619-266-2233 or send an email to ads at sdvoice.info for details on how to get started. If you have advertising needs, contact us. Our prices are both fair and reasonable. Follow us on Facebook at www.facebook.com forward slash voice and viewpoint or visit our website at www.sdvoice.info. Remember, a people without a voice cannot be heard. That's right. A people without a voice cannot be heard. You're here with the desk. Uh, from the editor uh, uh, with Dr. John Warren. Uh, when we left, we were talking, wanted to talk about the troops being pulled out of Germany and also Biden has a pick, he says. Yeah, well, let's we deal with the troops first, okay? This, this president is pulling 12,000 troops out of Germany. This is part of our uh, NATO uh, agreement. And so he's already uh, attacked the North uh, American Treaty Organization, NATO, uh, because he, when he first came into office, he said people weren't paying enough uh, in terms of their share. And so all of this is geared toward playing to his base uh, because he made these kinds of statements without an awareness of what was actually taking place. Uh, one of my big concerns, and we're probably about 98 days now from the November election, is the continued attack that's going to come from this president. Uh, we have seen signs of the attack being directed toward the Postal Service since we're looking at doing mail-in ballots. And he has put his cronies in charge. They are restructuring the delivery of the mail, delaying uh, when it goes out, how long the carriers work. The post office is a, a, a entity uh, required under the Constitution, so they can't necessarily get rid of it. Um, and so uh, this is getting to be a problem because we – we know that he's against mail-in ballots when people can vote against him. Uh, we know that we lost uh, Congressman Lewis, and one of the things I'm going to be highlighting over the next uh, few weeks is how important it is for us to still vote in spite of the Supreme Court in 2015, I believe, having gutted the Voting Rights Act by taking uh, Section uh, 2 out which required the Justice Department to do some oversight so that people couldn't sit up the kind of things we have taking place right now. We have long lines. For instance, we had a situation in Kentucky where 600,000 people had to use one precinct when they would have normally had the same number of precincts that were in the whole state. And we see our people being driven to lines like they were done in Wisconsin and where these lines are long, and we saw it happen in Georgia, I'm sorry, I was in Georgia where they, where they had 600,000 people that had to vote at one precinct, and all the other precincts were dismantled. So, uh, yeah, we're, it, the, the attack is there, and, and it's very serious because if he can undermine and decimate the election process, then he can, with the help of people like Bill Barr, he can try to manage to stay in office. And his niece, who just wrote her 
book about Uncle Donald uh, says that if this man gets reelected, it will be the end of democracy in America as we know it. So um, part of the NATO agreement, he's moving 12,000 troops out. Um, do, does that leave us at risk? Well, we have others there, but it, 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 it makes a statement uh, against our support for the, for the whole. And it's taking place at a time that Russia is getting stronger. Uh, whatever Putin has on Trump is enough to keep him quiet, uh, is enough to keep him from even raising questions about Russia putting bounties on uh, in Afghanistan on American troops who can be killed. And so it's a very serious, it's a very serious issue. Um, the troops, if they weren't necessary, they wouldn't have been there in the first place. And so it's a weakening of us. It's almost equivalent to uh, pulling out of the uh, the the, the uh, coalition on environmental uh, uh, safety and change, and just not wanting to believe anything uh, other than how do I get the next dollar to uh, my colleagues. Mm-hmm. So, so that 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 is greatly troubling uh, because it seems like our goodwill that has been established over so many years, our goodwill is being decimated by uh, our current leader. Um, do we have time to rebuild it? Um, I believe we can if we can survive until November and uh, put that dynamic new cabinet in place that's going to come. Uh, uh, people are looking toward November. It's very significant that... Republican uh, 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 funders and groups are turning to uh, Joe Biden to support him, uh, that people realize that the issue has really become bigger than party politics. Mm -hmm. It's who can keep us going. And I believe if we had the kind of leadership that uh, Governor Cuomo gave New York, we would not have uh, this 150,000 people dead with more people dying. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, I, I think this is very serious. All right. So let's get into it. The election is coming up less than 100 days away. Joe, Joe Biden, uh, the the what they say, the preemptive uh, uh, Democratic nomi uh, uh, nominee, the, the only one at this point. All he has to do is stay alive and he can he can get it. And he's trying to select a running mate. And this is getting to be an issue because we know with this Black Lives Matter and this whole movement is needs to be a woman of color. It needs to be a woman, number one, and a woman of color, number two. Uh, some people are trying to turn this into a popularity contest. Uh, someone saw Kamala Harris's name on the list, and so everybody's bragging about her being on a short list for the position. And some people remember that she was one of the people that attacked Biden during the uh, presidential uh, candidate debate uh, talking about him. Um, I think that while uh, she might uh, have done a wonderful job as uh, being a, a a senator, and she's obviously an able person, um, having been attorney general here in California. But there's more to this. Uh, I think Biden needs to pick someone who's going to be ready to take the gavel if something should happen to him. And I think that uh, one of the best qualified people out there uh, is Susan Rice, a former ambassador, uh, mm -hmm. who has an understanding of uh, our international uh, situation, which is so critical at this point because it's been decimated by Trump. And, and then, then in the uh, uh, sister who was a part of the impeachment panel uh, that comes from uh, Florida, the former chief of police, obviously has a sense of uh, how to handle the law and order issues on a local level. And um, I don't think it should be a popularity contest. Uh, and so I think that uh, you got to look at Tammy Duckworth as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, who is a, 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 a woman of color and um, a, a combat veteran who lost the, both of her legs in combat, a colonel in the reserves, um, another strong voice uh, for veterans. And so these are, these are the issues. And I think we got to remember that Joe Biden uh, held a position that he's looking for someone to fill for eight years. So he knows the position. He's a he's a veteran in terms of D.C. with the number of years he spent in the Senate. And he was also a very unique person in his years in office because he was one of those men who uh, rode the train every day uh, to go home to Delaware mm -hmm. um, uh, or uh, went, and often to Pennsylvania. And I know uh, Ben Chavis, our national president, often rode the train with him because he 
lives in uh, New Jersey. And so um, we're talking about somebody whose feet are really on the ground. America is looking for someone with confidence. Mm -hmm. uh, he's up there in the 60s. He's in double digits ahead of, of, of Trump and many of the very uh, states that were red before uh, that will turn blue. And so uh, the pandemic is an issue. Getting uh, uh, black folks in the South to do a uh, mail-in ballot is an issue, too. Uh, because I was talking to a, a labor official today about how the people in the South don't want to do mail-ins uh, because of the history of, of voting and, and it's standing in line three to six hours, you know. Uh, all of this gets to be real serious. And so I'm concerned about those of us who are just laid back out here mm -hmm. uh, kicking it. We saw some movement last time because here in San Diego County, some of the people stayed in line up to three hours at the register of voters waiting to vote. So mm -hmm. it could be different. Well, we're going to take a commercial break. And when we come back, I'd like to end off tonight with Proposition 16, uh, the whole affirmative action movement um, here in California. Y'all stay tuned from the desk of the editor right here on godradio1.com. Yes, you need a revocable living trust and other estate planning documents. Sometimes the most important questions when it comes to protecting your home and family assets are the questions you don't ask. The time is now to make decisions that protect your family in the unfortunate event of your death or incapacity. Don't let the probate process cause your family to lose your hard-earned assets and home. The Law Office of Antoinette Middleton is there to help with basic and sophisticated estate planning strategies, which includes special needs trust for children and disabled adults, asset protection and succession planning for business owners, will, revocable living trusts and irrevocable trusts, which protects assets and avoids medical state recovery after your death. The motto at the Law Office of Antoinette Middleton is to plan while you can. Call the Law Office of Antoinette Middleton at 619-235-9501 or email the office at info at lawofficesofam.com. Avoid being stuck with harsh and arbitrary court decisions after your death or disability. Plan today. The San Diego Voice and Viewpoint newspaper is San Diego's oldest and largest African-American publication. We bring you news for and about our community. Your stories matter to us. Thank you for allowing us to serve you for nearly six decades. Your support enables us to continue to forge ahead, informing you with news tailored to your needs. In addition to subscribing to our weekly publication, consider using Voice and Viewpoint to promote your business and events. Call us at 619-266-2233 or send an email to ads at sdvoice.info for details on how to get started. If you have advertising needs, contact us. Our prices are both fair and reasonable. Follow us on Facebook at www.facebook.com forward slash voice and viewpoint or visit our website at www.sdvoice.info. Remember, a people without a voice cannot be heard. Well, we're right back here from the desk of the editor. And uh, Dr. Warren, let's get to Proposition 16. Well, here we go again. You know, we, we are still, uh, we're looking at affirmative action and it would uh, overturn uh, all of the restrictions that were put on it. Um, I think it was when 209 passed uh, years ago. You know, I'd like to say a word about affirmative action because we get confused. Uh, affirmative action uh, came about as a result of... Uh, um, a program that the Small Business Administration had was was called AA Set Asides, and the idea was that small businesses could not compete on the same scale with bigger businesses in terms of dollars for federal contracts. And so, as a result of that, money was set aside to give uh, a window of opportunity. But when that was done, there were two places: there was a Chicago plan and a Philadelphia plan. I remember about forty years ago. And in, within those plans were uh, the opportunity for people to show that they were people of color. Mm -hmm. And so what happened is a number of white uh, males uh, uh, married uh, or got women to uh, put their businesses in their names that were women of color. And then there was the struggle to make sure women participated. So then they let the wives run the businesses so they could still get the money and people of color were left out of the process. And California 
um, I had this uh, uh, African American business person who carried the torch uh, against affirmative action, which made people feel real good because we were already fighting it with the Baki uh, scenario in terms of uh, of uh, seats being held for uh, uh, African Americans to uh, go to schools, and the idea that we were only in these Ivy League schools because um, they set aside space, but we didn't deserve to be there. And so now we have an opportunity. Um, the Proposition 16 is one of several propositions that will be on the November ballot. We have local propositions. That's the state proposition. Uh, local propositions are going to include things like uh, uh, the Citizens Review, uh, changing it to give a subpoena and different powers. None of this matters if we don't register now to vote and if we don't vote. And we are pushing to get uh, a campaign started as early as the 1st of September to get uh, Californians oriented to voting by mail. Well, um, I'm going to play the other side of it. I'm a young person who is dis enchanted by what I see from all around me and uh, I've been encouraged just to tune out and not vote. How does that affect and does it have what is the impact of that attitude? Well, it's an unfortunate attitude because the people who think that way have no sense of our history. They have no sense of people like John Lewis and what they went through getting beat across the head just to get us the right to vote. They have no sense of how we were asked to uh, take a job, jelly beans, and tell them how many people, how many jelly beans win a jar or uh, uh, a bar of soap with some water and count the bubbles. And I mean, all kinds of silly things to keep blacks from voting. And we see the power of the vote because the black vote, once we registered and voted and had the federal protections, blacks took over uh, elected positions in the South. Mm -hmm. in a very quick manner. And so the, we have the same problem with that element that we have with the pandemic. Mm -hmm. We got a generation of people. You know, the Bible makes this statement when it talks about uh, what happened in Egypt uh, uh, after uh, Joseph, mm -hmm. uh, you know, did all the great things he did and the Egyptians, the Hebrews multiplied. And the Bible says these words and it says, and they arose a Pharaoh that knew not Joseph. Mm -hmm. And so we have uh, people who know not our history who don't think they have to pay any attention to it, uh, think it's all about them. And that's why they are dying in record numbers from COVID because that's the same element they won't put on a mask. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know how you teach people uh, other than in a crisis. Mm -hmm. A crisis brings about a willingness to hear just in terms of survival. We haven't got that desperate yet. And and, and that's the one thing that, I, that um, so many people um, can complain and um, but complaining without finding a solution or being a part of the solution is just, you know, like a sound and brass and a temper, uh, tinkering symbol symbol. Yes. You're just making noise. Right. But you're not doing anything. And after all the things that have been going on with the protests and and, and the uprises everywhere, um, we need to see an outcome. Now, lastly, Dr. Warren, I got to ask this question. I know we're in California. I know we're not in Seattle, but they're unleashing the federal troops. And what's going on up there that they decide that they're going to break into the federal building? Now, what kind of nonsense is that? Well, you know, it's really an excuse. And if the people were smart there, they would shift the demonstrations away from the federal building because the federal building has become the excuse for having more federal troops there. And as I say in my editorial this week, um, you already have a person in the attorney general bar who ignores the language of the 10th Amendment to the Constitution, which says that all uh, 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 powers not given to the federal government are reserved to the states. And that means that states have the ability to exercise some control. So I understand that there's been some kind of agreement reached to pull troops out. But we got two scenarios. On the one hand, we got you know, that the federal building here on the West, and many people said that's the wrong place for Trump to have chose to make this stance. Let's not forget that in 1995, we had uh, the Timothy McVeigh's in Oklahoma City that blew up the federal building and killed all those people. And so the people in the West uh, don't mind going against the federal government. At the same time, we have that the nightmare in Chicago mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. where we have uh, a homicides uh, out of control. Uh, Lori Lightfoot doesn't want federal help, and they're sending uh, federal people in anyhow because this was one of Trump's campaign promises. So we just got uh, we got so many balls in the air to keep our eyes on. Yeah, and it's, it is really sad. Number one, I think that all protesters that are really protesting for the right reason should, again, abandon that area and let those people that are just going to be anarchists to stay at the federal building and say, y'all on your own, the movement is over here, not over there. Because of the, you know how they used to say back in the day, you know, birds of a feather flock together. Yes. If we all together, that means that we must be on the same page. Right. Um, um, but it only takes that one bad apple to spoil the bunch. You know, my my encouragement to them is to move away from the federal building and so that their their voices are heard in the right way. I think so many people are now into the sensationalism of the protests and not effective protesting. Well, we already know for a fact that we documented both in Minneapolis and in um, uh, um, uh, Santa Monica, and in New York, we've seen people who, under the guise of the protests, were out to vandalize, break into buildings and steal and do all of those things. We've, we've seen that that's real. And we've seen protesters try to stop them in a number of instances themselves. So we're going to have that element that take place. But we still must keep our eye on the situation that we're dealing with more than one pandemic. Mm-hmm. And I don't want us to get so involved in... Um, as important as Black Lives Matter and All Lives Matter is, is that the people protesting must become the voters for November. And if they become the voters, we can be guaranteed that we will have the new day and the changes that we're looking for. And this is greater than trying to stop the funding of police in its track. Many of these things can't be shut down overnight. They've got to be reprogrammed, redesigned. Yeah, and I think that a lot of things has to do with the semantics or with wording. Um, people are big on defund, be de- defund, but uh, restructuring, you know, um, shows uh, shows a bigger impact because if you restructure, that means you can restructure funding, you can restructure training, you can restructure the climate. But, you know, when you say defund, it comes off as negative versus as a positive way of True. bringing about change. Yes, just take money away. And then what? And we're looking here because we're still locally focused on, you know, the the, the millions of dollars of uh, CARES money that was directed toward the police department at a time that many of us think that the police department needs some reductions, not necessarily in the number of officers, but you got all those chiefs sitting up there on the top floor. And do we need all of these people? And uh, we have jobs that can be reassigned uh, to folks. And so there, there needs to be, I keep telling this city, it needs to go to zero-based budgeting, where every year it just zeroes out all the money that anybody has in their budget, redesign the budget from scratch in terms of what they actually need, which stops people from hiding dollars at a time that all dollars need to be accounted for. Yeah, and so that that's pretty much um, what we have to begin to look at. And in this sense of new normal, we have to not just be comfortable with what we used to do all all back in the day. We have to say what is going to work currently at this point for this time in this generation. Um, again, encouraging everybody, uh, trust the vote this time. Get out to vote. Do not get complacent. Do not let people talk you away from your vote. People gave your life for it. We honored John Lewis. And I don't know. If you would if you would have cracked my skull and fractured my skull, I don't know if I'd have been back to get take another one right there. Yeah. I probably would have been looking for you. Yeah. Uh song came out just recently, try try Jesus, but don't try me because I fight. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so I'm like saying, I don't know if I'd have walked back over that bridge without, you know, uh, without having some extra uh, uh, energy. Well, Dr. Thompson, you, I just want to remind you that during those days of the nonviolent coordinating committee and the protests, that every day they got ready to march, they had to do a shakedown inspection yeah. of the people who came out to march. Yeah. And they found billy clubs and brass knuckles and, and uh, long knives and all kinds of weapons because everybody wasn't there to get hit. Yeah, Some people were there to do some hitting. And so we still have the situation today. There's some people that are there to do some hitting. Not everybody is there to to, to, to get hit. Amen. It's serious. Well, Dr. Ward, well, Dr. Ward we have uh, got to the end of our show. Yeah. Uh, any final words? Well, all I want to do is just encourage people, wear the mask, stay safe, uh, be careful of where you go. If you see a crowd, don't get in it. 
If you see a store that's got lines, go back and shop at another time. Uh, uh, get yourself some gloves. If you got to get food gloves that are disposable so that the handles that you're grabbing, the basket that you're holding, no longer the food stores have people standing outside. Now they got a station where you got to wipe the basket down yourself and, and get in there and just be just mindful. Uh, be mindful of how important it is to stay well and stay alive. All right. That is it from.